Welcome to Chamber Champions. I'm Derek Miller with the Salt Lake Chamber, Utah's voice for business. Each week, we take the opportunity to speak with leaders from business, government, education, and community service organizations who are making a difference in Utah. As a Chamber Champion, these individuals are recognized for their contributions and provided a forum to empower their vision and objectives. Today we're joined with Mike Washburn, the president and CEO of Thanksgiving Point. Mike, thanks for joining us. Thank you. You know, you, you and I were just talking a few minutes earlier off camera um, about the challenges in dealing with the coronavirus. Of course, every business, every organization, every nonprofit, every individual for that matter is dealing with those challenges. But it's gotta be particularly acute at Thanksgiving Point because you're a destination. Absolutely. And you're built around uh, bringing people together. How do you do that and be safe under the current environment? You make a great point. I've said this on many a Zoom call is what we do is build to get as many people in our venues as possible. And so in this environment where we're restricting the number of people that can come in and initially closed down, we had to close down on March 16th. We closed all of our venues and we uh, stopped all of our activities and events and so we weren't able to start reopening until the state went to an orange level of risk on Mar on May 1st and then we started slowly reopening our venues at that point with limited severely limited capacity. Well, you have so many venues and of course over the uh, last few years you've been adding just terrific venues. Uh, maybe we should have started there, but nevertheless, let's let's move on to that. Talk about some of the new things that have been opened and are all of the venues open right now? We have just recently, well, starting in June, we had all of the venues open. It's when we thought we might go to a green level of risk in the state, but we felt like we could safely reopen all the venues. Not all of the exhibits were open. We've just recently here in August opened all of the exhibits because we felt like we've been able to manage the level of risk and the safety of our guests and of our staff. And so everything is open at this point. Let's talk about planning for a minute. Um, obviously, uh, you've had lots of plans, seen them come to fruition at Thanksgiving point, but I'm guessing you've never done more planning in your life or your career than you have over the last several months because things are changing so fast. Uh, what are you doing as far as looking forward? What, what do you try to plan for for the future, Mike? Well, I think the flexibility in this environment is key. Some of my employees don't want to hear the word pivot anymore. We have pivoted until we're, uh, you know, because we feel like we've been very progressive, particularly in the museum industry. We've been really leading in lots of ways as far as developing uh, earned revenue and generating our own support. And so in this environment, that becomes much harder to do. But we are, you know, we're looking forward to better days and we are working, our next big project that we're working on and we're working on it in this environment is to improve our farm country experience. It's one of our five venues. We feel like it's a growing interest of people. Where is their food coming from? Particularly in this environment, uh, I think people are even more interested in uh, self-sustainability and where their food comes from and growing their own food. So farm country will is a unique venue and will become even more, I think, interesting to people to understand how 2% of the population feeds 100% of the population and all of the innovation and technology uh, that goes into that. So it's a great combination of silicon slopes right there at Thanksgiving Point and technology and how it impacts our food supply and really getting people hands-on with how that works and, and what that means to them. 
Well, I think you're right. I think it probably is something that before the pandemic, many of us took for granted and didn't really think about where the food came from when we went to a grocery store. But, you know, we saw in those early days with a lot of people going to the grocery store and some shelves not being as full as they typically were, it's probably more top of mind than it has been in the past. Were there any plans that you had for the summer that had to be put on hold? We have put many plans on hold this summer. We put, I mean, really, almost all of our uh, big mass gathering plans we put on hold. Just one example is we always do a, a golf tournament and a big gala fundraiser in August. And early on in the summer, we thought, well, we can still hold the golf tournament, but we will move the indoor uh, gala to the gardens, to the Ashton Gardens, a beautiful big outdoor space. And as it got closer, we realized we cannot get all these people together, even if they're socially distanced in the gardens. And so we ended up holding a virtual gala, uh, which was very successful. We were thrilled with the way the community supported it, but it's just an example of you have to, you don't just make a decision and then stick with it. You have to keep reevaluating. Pivoting. And pivoting. Yes. <laughs> yes. Pivoting and pivoting. Well, one of the other things that we're learning through this um, pandemic is how important community is. And Thanksgiving Point is just a gem for our community and has been for a, for a long time and continues to grow and evolve with, as we were talking about earlier, new, uh, new venues and new activities. Tell me a little bit about you know Thanksgiving Point, what it means for the community there at the point of the mountain, and and I would just imagine that there were many people who were excited to see Thanksgiving Point open up again because we see more people spending more time outside than we ever have before. Absolutely, I think first of all Thanksgiving Point has become a real community asset and a real gem in our state. I know the governor sometimes refers to it as the Smithsonian of the West because we have so many great venues and experience and our members, we have over 20,000 household members, uh, really value what we do. And so the, when we were able to start reopening, there was just a lot of enthusiasm for uh, the experiences that we have to offer. Uh, we, while we were closed, we provided a lot of online content. We're trying to work with teachers and parents who are keeping their, you know, kids who are staying home from school and teachers in the classroom, trying to help them. How do we do virtual field trips? There's just a lot of new ways to look at things and decide how to be accommodating in this environment in a way that still is very meaningful to our community, and I think we've done that well. Are there? I'm just curious to, to know, are there, obviously Thanksgiving Point uh, is unique in our community, but not unique in the country or the world, meaning there are other uh, venues like Thanksgiving Point in other places. Is, is there, has there been commonality, uh, grouping, getting together, sharing of best practices among you and your colleagues? Absolutely, like you, we've uh, done way too many Zoom calls. And uh, so we've been on a lot of, because we were, because Utah handled this well, I think, and because Thanksgiving Point was really following our guidelines and CDC guidelines, we were one of the first large venues to op reopen in the country. So we've been on lots of calls with our peers and colleagues uh, throughout the United States uh, talking about how we open safely, reopen safely, and the guidelines that we followed, and online ticketing, and just the myriad of things that you have to do to do that. But we've, I think, been real leaders in the industry, and not only locally, but nationally as well. Well, speaking of guidelines and speaking of being a leader, Thanksgiving Point was one of the first organizations that took the stay safe to stay open pledge for which I'm grateful. So thank you. And um, that is, of course, a, a program through the Salt Lake Chamber that's intended uh, to allow businesses, organizations to communicate to their customers, to those people who are visiting them, as well as their employees. These are the guidelines that we are following. Uh, why was it important for you to take that pledge? I think we're part of the community, and it's an, an important part of the community, and we want to keep our community safe. So we were delighted to jump on board very quickly on that initiative and be, again, a leader with the Salt Lake Chamber and keep our 
not only keep our team members safe, but keep our guests safe and, and help them feel comfortable that if once we reopen, they could come back and with all the plexiglass and all the signage and all the social distancing and all the requirements that we took seriously and followed that they would be safe. And I think it's worked really well. And again, we want everyone to follow those guidelines so that we're all in this together because we are all in this together. We are, absolutely. Let's hope that uh, 2020 is a unique year and that we never have to relive relive it again. Um, but thank you for what you're doing to adapt and innovate under the challenging circumstances. And thank you, Michael Washburn, for joining us today. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us on Chamber Champions, where we recognize and provide a platform to those who are contributing to Utah and our unrivaled quality of life. Chamber Champions is a production of the Salt Lake Chamber, Utah's voice for business. Thank <laughs> you.